Hey friends, here's a review of some select pieces of equipment I traveled to Rome with for voiceover. I'll put timestamps so you can skip to what you care about. Let's do it. First up, we have the PIBS panels. PIBS stands for Portable Isolation Booth, and it's created by Gick Acoustics. Now, before I get into some of the improvements that can and should be made to these panels, I'll start by saying that these are the best mobile panels that I have been able to find in existence for both the price and the quality of sound that you're gonna get. I'm incredibly happy with these panels and they worked perfectly for what I needed. They created a quality of sound that matches the quality of my full home studio. But that doesn't mean that these are perfect. In fact, they're quite a bit far from perfect. The price is really decent. You're paying about half of that price just in the cost of materials. And this is very important. They are advertised as 30 pounds. Not a chance. Mine come in at a whopping 52.5 pounds, and that's not including any of the wrapping or anything else that you need to package this up to actually travel with. These are very heavy. Now, one of the reasons perhaps for some of the weight difference is at the suggestion of the engineer, I chose not to do the circle cutouts that they show in the advertisement, but I still don't think those circle cutouts make up for 25 pounds of weight here. The panels themselves also came in just a little bit larger than the site says. So if you're planning for a certain kind of case, you're gonna wanna wait to see what the actual size of these panels are because they do make them per order. And I guess just human error or whatever else, they don't come in exactly the size that it says on the site. I'm going to be making some modifications to these panels before my next trip. The first thing I'm going to change are the latches. On every panel that I got, I have three in total and I traveled with two, these latches warped and they don't work properly. And this is the first trip that I've ever taken with them. So on every panel, these latches are warped. They don't wanna latch shut. And if I'm able to get it to latch shut, if I even just bump it, it wants to pop open. And that would risk the whole panel falling backwards. So I'm going to probably switch these for a latch like this that'll make it more durable and a bit easier to put up without me worrying about it unlatching while I'm working. I also had an issue with the wood breaking on this panel. This is because of the design. They put these pieces of wood here to help with the bowing, I guess, to make up for that little bit of space that the latch is taking up between the two panels. But it doesn't seem that it was enough and the wood started splitting after this first trip. So I think maybe I'll make the spacer a bit larger. I'll have to workshop that a little bit. Another note is that the panels alone are not sufficient for a complete setup. I had a theater curtain that is rated for sound treatment that I draped over. And while I was in Rome, I took one of the spare comforters to put on top as well. And these three things, the panels, the curtain, and the comforter all came together to make the fully sound treated booth. Because I had to drape the curtain and the comforter on top, I think it put some strain on the panels themselves and it created kind of a bowing in as you can see here. And I think that's what ended up cracking the wood. Another consideration is that there is no carrying case for these. I've looked countless hours for a carrying case to transport these panels. And the only option I found that's viable is this OCH case, which no matter what website you look at it on, will run you about $1,000 for two panels and you won't have any wiggle room for additional things in the box. I'd like to be able to wrap the curtain in the box and put a few more things like the stand and a couple other things in there. So my solution ended up being these duffel bags, which presented their own challenges. As you can see, they are very loose around the panels themselves, and it took a lot of work to wrap the panels, everything additional that I wanted in there, and then wrap the duffel bag to make sure that it was gonna be waterproof and that it was gonna be nice and tight and make it a little bit easier to carry. I'll be brainstorming a solution to be able to travel f with these in the future. If the design that they used was a little bit more efficient, I might have been able to find a case. I'm not sure why they didn't have it just fold completely in half, and it would have saved at least five inches here, but no matter what, they would have never fit into a large luggage case, as you can see here by comparison. 
And lastly, you'll need to be dragging these across the floor to get them into position. With a weight and as they're standing, it is not easy to lift them and move them. So I'm going to need to put a protective covering on the bottom to be able to drag them around without damaging the cloth of the panel. You can see here that it got very dirty and I don't want the cloth to start ripping. Final thoughts, if you plan to fly with these, the measurements are acceptable for oversized items, at least with American Airlines, and I imagine that it's pretty close with the other airlines as well. I checked it as an instrument, and that gave me a weight limit up to 165 pounds, which gave me a lot of wiggle room because the final wrap-up, these came to about 72 pounds each. All of my adjustments are going to be relatively easy because we have a lot of tools at my house and are used to DIY projects. The hardest part is going to be figuring out a case that will make these easier to travel with without making them too heavy. If you guys have any ideas, I'd be eternally grateful. But if you're just looking for an at-home studio, these panels really are amazing. They aren't perfect. I give them a solid C minus for actual travel, but I give them a solid B plus for an at-home studio. Next up is the stand. This is a little treasure I found on Amazon, and it's the only one of its kind that I was able to find really anywhere on the internet. It weighs in at about 17 pounds, it's very sturdy, and it collapses down really nicely. The only aspect of this that isn't perfect is that it doesn't collapse down all the way to fit inside a large piece of luggage. If this top pole just went down a little bit more, it would fit, but alas, it doesn't. So I would either need to saw off part of the pole, which I don't wanna do, or always make sure that I'm able to pack the stand with the panels themselves. It comes with five bulky attachments, which is fine, you'll just need another bag, that I worked with to make my setup work. I unfortunately wasn't able to find more attachments online to further customize, otherwise I would have ordered more flat surfaces to use. It rolls very nicely, the wheels come off easily for transport. I really love this stand, and with the sturdiness of it, I felt very comfortable allowing it to hold all of my equipment. And finally, I have to say something about this. I love this trackball. I have the expensive Kensington trackball on my usual setup, and I actually prefer this. This trackball, I think, maybe at the highest was like $40, $45. I think it was actually less. It's ergonomic on the wrist. I can do almost everything on this mouse that I can do on the Kensington, and it's smaller. The only thing I can't do on this that I can do on the Kensington is program the additional buttons, but honestly, I don't really use the buttons that I programmed that often because I always have my keyboard and it's easier to just do both, the keyboard and the trackball. So in any case, if you guys are looking for something that helps you edit that is trackball related, this is the mouse that I recommend. Well, that's about it. If there's any other piece of equipment that you guys want to know about, let me know. See you next time.